Hello chemistry students, this is Mr. Nicholson and this is a video on the classification of matter. Now this is a really good place to start our journey through the theory of chemistry. And just remember, while you may be left scratching your head sometimes when during your study of chemistry, we've got this. Okay, onwards. Now today what we're going to do is we are going to start by discussing some big ideas. And our number one big idea is if we try and put everything in the universe, that the entire universe, the grand kumbaya, kumbaya all right, into one of two categories, what we have is matter and energy. That makes up everything. All right, and by matter, what we mean is we mean material that has a mass and it takes up space. We mean things, stuff. All right, and matter's a fairly... You know, as a concept, it's a pretty easy concept to grasp because largely you can hold it in your hands. You're made of it. You interact with it. It's the second category here that we actually struggle with at times, which is energy. All right. And energy does not have a mass. It doesn't take up space, but it is what actually moves matter. And so when it comes to it over the course of this first year of our study of chemistry, what we're going to be doing is we are going to be really concerning yourself with the rearrangement of matter, that's chemistry in a nutshell, but we're also going to be looking at and examining how energy actually affects that. So just bear in mind, energy is not only the domain of physicists, it's also very much the domain of chemists, and we're going to look at how energy links into the rearrangement of matter in a big way over the course of this year. Now, we really need to actually give, give energy a bit of a better definition at this point, and what we'll do is we will quite simply just state that it is the ability to make things move and light, heat, sound, motion or kinetic energy and electricity all fall within that and they can all actually take part and interact with chemical reactions and be a part of chemical reactions. And so that's what we're going to use as a definition of energy at the moment, but we will build on that. We will keep coming back to that and we will look at how that actually interacts with chemical reactions over time. Okay, so as we get started just here, let's take a look at matter. Okay, now matter itself, all right, what we know right now and coming into, into chemistry right now, into the course, you would already know quite a few things about matter. For example, you would be aware that matter is actually comprised of small particles known as atoms. Okay, and these small particles are, at the atomic scale, are actually comprised of even smaller particles, notably electrons and a nucleus in the middle, which itself is made up of even smaller particles, just down here, the proton and the neutron. And we also have, if we delve deeper into the matter that those particles themselves, those subatomic particles, because they're, they make up atoms, so they're, su they're, they're, they're parts of atoms, that's why they're called subatomic, they actually are comprised of other particles such as quarks and so forth. And what we really need to actually specify at this point, and what we really need to develop, de to develop in terms of language, is we need to actually develop this really good idea before we go into the atomic, before we go into the subatomic, okay, we need to actually develop this really good idea of how to talk about matter. And that's what today's video is all about. Okay, so let's take a look and break down matter and how we can discuss matter. First, by splitting matter apart into a couple of categories. All right, and so what we'll do is we'll split matter first into pure substances. All right, and by pure substances, what we mean is we mean materials that cannot actually be separated by physical means. Okay, whereas if we take a look at the other main category of matter, by this classification, we're talking about mixtures. And, of course, those materials can be separated by physical means. 
Now let's take a little narrow in on our pure substances here. We can divide that into a couple of extra additional categories. Notably we have elements. Okay, and we also have compounds. Now by these two categories, what we mean in the case of elements is we mean materials that are comprised of only the one type of atom. Okay, and so they are indivisible. All right, and indivisible of course being the original meaning of the word atom. Okay, so the because these are only comprised of only the one type of particle, the one type of atom, they cannot be separated any further um, by physical means, as they're a pure substance. They cannot also be separated any further by chemical means, because you're just splitting apart particles that are all the same thing. Okay, and to contrast that, in our pure substances category of matter, we also have compounds, which are comprised of two or more different types of atoms in a fixed ratio. So they're still a pure substance, they're still uniform all the way throughout. So if you divide, divide a piece of matter in half, it's still going to be the same in each piece of matter, but they, are, they can be broken down further. You can actually separate them using chemical means. You can break them apart to their individual atoms or into simpler compounds and molecules. Okay, if it's a particularly large large compound. Now, to contrast that, if we take a look at mixtures, okay, we can break that apart into a couple of categories as well. Notably, we can break that apart into homo genus mixtures, and these are uniform mixtures. All right, when it comes to it, homogeneous mixtures Really, they look like pure substances, but they're not. They can still be separated by physical means. And our second type is heterogeneous mixtures. All right. And by heterogeneous mixtures, we mean mixtures that are, they're, they're non-uniform. Okay. You can very, very clearly see that they are, they are actually a mixture of different materials, be they elements and compounds mixed together or perhaps even a series of particles that are actually mixtures themselves mixed together. And the thing about both of these is that if we take a look at the root words here, remember science words are like Lego. Okay, so by homo we mean the same and by hetero we mean different. All right, and so when we take a look at homogeneous mixtures, we mean materials that are uniform all the way throughout. And when we take a look at heterogeneous mixtures, we mean materials that are non-uniform. Oh, I've forgotten the X just here. There we go. None, none the wiser. Okay, a good place to um, start here, and this is because I've tossed a whole bunch of technical jargon at you, is to actually take a look at some examples of homogeneous and heterogeneous mixtures. And so we'll get rid of that and we'll bring up this heading. And if we take a look at some homogeneous mixtures, what we mean by homogeneous mixtures, we mean materials like seawater, filtered um, black coffee. So materials, largely solutions, all right? But many materials that you encounter just in day-to-day -day life, and for all intents and purposes, they look uniform, they behave uniform, but you can still separate them physically. In the case of both of these, you still could um, evaporate the solid material that's suspended or otherwise dissolved in both of those solutions out of them. And to contrast that, if we look at heterogeneous mixtures, we of course have beach sand, which, is, which has its different grains. And if you, you know, obviously look closely, you can see that they are separate different pieces of material. You have rocks, which are particularly sedimentary rocks, which are collections of other rock material. You have mixtures such as sand and water. All right, there's a bit of a beach thing going on here, but you also have many of the products we encounter in daily life. And I have an example there of a salad dressing, which is becoming separated. And that is an oil and water mixture. In fact, many of the cleaning products, many of the um, cosmetic products, many of 
products like shampoo, soaps, and so forth, they are all heterogeneous mixtures. But there is a range. There is a range between heterogeneous and homogeneous. And if it's well stabilized, sometimes you can't tell the difference between the two or you'd need a microscope to be able to tell the difference between the two. Finally, I'd like to actually take one other run at the classification of matter before we finish up. And we're going to do this by, instead of just separating it into categories, but actually separating it into categories on the basis of three important questions. And that is, if we take a look at matter and we go, is it uniform throughout? Okay, that's our first question just here. And if the answer is no, what we need to actually note is that we would have a heterogeneous mixture comprised of coarse material and most likelihood, but not necessarily. We might only be able to distinguish that it is a heterogeneous mixture via looking at it under a microscope. Okay, but if our material is uniform, we then have to go on to asking some more questions. All right. And we need to actually go, can we actually separate this mixture by physical means? All right. And so if we take a look at that, and if the answer is yes, we have a homogeneous mixture. If the answer is no, then what we actually have is we have a pure substance. All right. And that leads us on to our third and final question, which is, can we break it down further by performing some chemistry? And if our answer in this case here is yes, what we have is a compound. But if our answer is no, we have ourselves an element. All right, and I say this by, actually I wanna preface this, when we look at most of the world, most of the world when we actually go and we interact with matter, we are going to be interacting with mixtures. In particular, we are going to be interacting with heterogeneous mixtures for the most part, but we also have some very notable homogeneous mixtures, and it really comes down to how you look at it, all right? You know, air could be viewed as a homogeneous mixture, unless of course you consider the suspended particulate matter in air, in which case you'll be looking at it as a heterogeneous mixture. Likewise, the same at the beach. You look at, you'd look at seawater as being a solution, a solution containing salt such as sodium and potassium, as well as magnesium and calcium ions. But at the same time, it would also have suspended particles. It would have stuff like sand in it, it would have seaweed particles and well fish in it and so in which case it's more heterogeneous in nature but if you just looked at it in terms of the liquid component it would be closer to homogeneous okay so what you need to do when you're actually looking at matter and we're actually using these definitions is to employ a little bit of common sense and actually decide where these criteria actually lie in the case of what you're actually working with Okay, so that's it for this video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in class. Bye.